Welcome to episode 175 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're talking about how this book changed my life. It looks really boring, doesn't it? <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I'm going to tell you a story today uh, from business, from my business journey. So I started my business, my first business in 2003, and it was 2016. So 13 years later, I needed a break. So I actually booked a flight and I flew to New York City with no agenda. I flew in. I was going to fly in early in the morning. I did. And I was going to fly back late at night. And my goal was to just get some clarity because there were so many things going on. I was trying to make sense of things. So literally, I landed at JFK, put my earbuds in, and I started walking. And I walked 20, I probably walked over 20 miles that day. I walked up and down the island of Manhattan. I went through the financial district. I went up Fifth Avenue. I actually snuck in to the current Vayner Media offices when they first opened in Hudson Yards because no one really knew they were there and I just pretended I was supposed to be there. I'll see if I can find the video from that. I kind of got up there and was like, I don't know what to do now. I made it. I was wrestling through the challenges of business and the lack of clarity or at least the mindset when you're in the storm of so many things going on, just faced with my ignorance and faced with my inexperience. I didn't have a coach. I didn't have anyone to teach me. I learned, I read, and so I walked around all day and I got inspired. I feel alone when I'm in the city. It's really great. Um, a lot of people find solace and solitude in the woods. Strangely enough, maybe because I'm a city kid, I feel alone when I'm in a busy, bustling city. No one knows who I am. No one has any expectations of me and I can kind of disappear into the crowd. And uh, that's really energizing for my spirit. So I did that. And I walked around and I saw the art and I saw the action and the, and you know and I just was thinking, thinking, thinking. So on the way home, I was in the airport waiting for my flight home. It was probably 11 p.m. My flight got delayed and I was walking through uh, and I saw one of those little Hudson News bookstores and I saw the book rack and for some reason, I saw this book. It's Harvard Business Review's Guide to Finance Basics for Managers. Now my journey in business involved zero financial training zero uh, formal education, zero family experience in business. So everything that I had learned, I had, to, I had to pick up. And you know, like this doesn't exactly call to me if you know my personality. I'm a people person, not as much a numbers person. However, I had navigated business for 13 years to a growing, thriving business. At the time, we started from one man. At that point, we were a multi-million dollar business. And I didn't know really much about financial management, uh, the basics of finance. And there was something in me that realized, like, I need to know more about this. Funny thing about that, like, you have to understand profit. So I started reading this book on the flight home. And from New York to Syracuse, it's like an hour, not even. I read the entire book on the way home, and I spilled coffee on it, and it's full of notes. This book changed my life because business is about two areas. It's about people, but it's also about profit. And the profit side I hadn't been paying attention to. So I want to share some excerpts. <laughs> I have it squared in, right? Gross profit margin. I hadn't, I didn't understand the meaning of that in business. EBITDA, right? Earnings before income debt taxes. I, I didn't understand that. And I underline this. Gross profit margin shows how effectively, efficiently a company produces goods or services. I was like, oh, okay. I think I understand that. I have another excerpt here where it gives an example of a story that got excited about bringing on a new client because it was $5 million in client revenue and it actually lowered the bottom line by $700,000 in this company because all clients aren't the same and bending over backwards to get a client and the revenue doesn't mean that it's gonna make you more profitable. Being a people person and wanting to make it happen and wanting to grow the top line in revenue, I didn't understand that I was actually shooting myself in the foot with a lot of the clients we were taking on. And then here's the last thing I have earmarked. It says, transforming a revenue culture into a profit culture is no small task. So this hit me right between the eyes. And I realized if there was no profit, my ability to take care of the people was significantly diminished. And it actually, at some point, it would probably be eliminated 
because profit is the lifeblood of a company. And I kind of grew up in a family where people who had money were the other people. I didn't know a single per I didn't even know a manager in a Burger King, right? I didn't know anybody that had money. That was always the other people. So profit was kind of this four letter word, although it's a five letter word in my family. We just didn't understand it. We didn't know it. And so 13 years into business, it took for me to realize, oh, this is important if I want to keep taking care of people. I got back and I met with my senior leadership team. I said, from now on, we're going to become a profit-centered culture. And that doesn't mean we're only going to focus on profit, but that profit has to be in the mix. And, you know, I was insecure about it because I had been so bent toward the people side of business, didn't really talk about profits much. So when we brought our whole team together, put a whole slide deck, we, you know, we pulled people in from all the states that they were working in. We were a regional business. And I started talking about the philosophy of if we don't have profit, we can't take care of one another. And everyone bought right in. And then not too long after that, I actually um, brought for the first time some consultants, outside consultants, into the business to take a look. And be, as a result of reading this, and they were people that I trusted. And they started looking and they, you know, they started interviewing our senior leaders. They started reviewing financial statements, which we had to like do some work to get together because we weren't very uh, profit centric. We weren't very, uh, you know, we didn't track a lot. And so we got what we got together and they looked at everything and they came back and they said, you know, we've seen a lot of businesses. They've managed publicly traded companies that, you know, very, very they, they, it was Rob and Bob. We call them the Bobs. And they said, you know, we're not really sure how you've stayed in business this long. We're not really sure. We look at your financial statements. We look at the management of the business. And then we look at the morale, the attitude, um, the customer satisfaction, the fact that we've been growing. They said, we don't know how. And really, really what we had done is built a business on the back of company culture and just a lot of grit and hard work. And in that moment, we transformed the business and started focusing on the business side the profit side, the financial tracking side. And we began an entire initiative to get our house in order. And so we did, we became a very well-tracked business. And what that actually did, what I didn't wasn't aware of it at the time, that helped us to build a more systematic business that ran very, very well. Which meant when I got a phone call from the CEO of Dent Wizard International saying that, we've noticed what you're doing. We, we'd like to see if there's a way we can work together. I was like, what exactly does that mean? You know? And he says, well, we want to know if you'd ever be interested in selling your business. And so as we went down that lane, I had breakfast with my wife that was, so we could talk about it. Right. We went out and I started tearing up when I talked about it. She's like, you should probably just tell them no, cause you're not going to be able to do this. But you know, we worked through it and we figured out that it was a good decision for everyone involved to the industry was changing. The whole reconditioning industry was changing. And if we were going to keep taking care of people and keeping up, it worked. It worked. And so when they looked at the business, they realized like, oh, this is a real business. Typically, the, the owner would be like hands in the dirt every day. But we built a business that was sound and structural, sold that business. It was acquired, pivoted into the agency, freed me up to do more. Right. My life is so different now because of this one thing. And the moral of the story, the punchline is you can never underestimate the one piece of information that you don't have. That's why the pursuit of that information and the pursuit of the perspective you don't have can be the most important thing. The pursuit of that clarity is what could change everything in the future. And as I saw this book on my shelf, I remembered this moment and I had forgotten about it, but I remembered it. And it's that pursuit of the thing you don't know that is going to help give you the perspective that you don't have that can move you to the place that you don't even know you are moving toward, but is a very, very good place. I hope that this podcast can be a little piece of that for you. And please connect with me on social media. Let me know what your moment was. We'll share some of them. It's good to be on this journey with you. And it's good to remember moments like this because they matter much more than we remember. And remembering this perspective helps us to kind of stay on the hunt. It's helping me stay on the hunt right now. So until next week, I hope you stay on the hunt. I hope you look for that perspective and look out for that one thing that is gonna give you the clarity you need to make good steps to take care of the people around you. It's good to take care of one another. I will see you next week. We came to fight.